I was in high school, I wasn't quite sure what I would do with my life. I wanted to be in something that was maybe a little more fast paced. I started running and I wound up actually in third place in the US Army Europe Championships. It was kind of natural after I got injured to get into wheelchair racing. A truck run right over my chest, so, and a lot of internal damage as well as the spinal cord injury. The first wheelchair I got was this 80 pound behemoth. It was just terrible. And my thought was, oh, we could do better than this, and, uh, and we need to. I'm Dr. Rory Cooper. I am the director of the Human Engineering Research Laboratories. My wife likes to say that I was a better engineer than an athlete. Oh, look, well, let's do this one first. Let's see if it works, right? <laughs> no, that's it. Ooh, just a little, a little spark, spark fly. Yeah. <laughs> it did that yesterday, too. No, that should be much better. Just by looking at it, right? It should. Yeah. I wanted to create a lab where we could apply advanced engineering and medical rehabilitation research to improve the mobility function and quality of life of individuals with disabilities, especially our veteran population. We're also integrators of technology, taking technology from Internet of Things and cloud computing and wearable computing and artificial intelligence and bringing them together. Well, these are ultrasound sensors, right? Ultrasound, laser... Laser range, range finder. IR sensors. So the idea is that you have all of these sensors and then say, okay, it's, it's this shape and this dimension, this color, and then estimate what it is. We're trying to be a soup to nuts type laboratory. So the idea is that we can go from a you know, concept all the way really to a clinical practice guideline. What you want to see is the person as much as you can to fit the wheelchair more like you would a shoe or a glove or a prosthetic limb. So we worked on how you optimize the wheelchair to the individual. And then we worked on better algorithms about how to filter the signal coming from the body, which led to more people being able to drive independently. These were people that were either staying at home or being pushed around by a friend or a family member or a healthcare provider, and now had independent mobility. We broke that non-traditional mold, and it's just continued to evolve from there. So instead of having the user controlling robot manually, we can put in some autonomous function like uh, the object recognition, the camera actually sees uh, where the objects are and uh, let the robot figure out how to pick up the objects for the user. And they also let them to help them eating, drinking, dressing, uh, opening doors, going out for shopping. One of the things we've always believed in is that individuals with disabilities can you know, be clinicians and engineers and inventors and entrepreneurs and business people. And I uh, wanted that to be part of our model, that we have people with and without disabilities working together as we should have in all of society. You know, we see people that have had a lot of tragedy in their life in many cases, and uh, we're here to help. But it's also important that you can create a wonderful technology, but if you can't get it on the market, you can't get it reimbursed, and you can't get it into people's hands, you know, what impact did you really have? I'm very pleased with what we've accomplished, but I also know that we have a long way to go, and there's still a lot of challenges to continue addressing, and hopefully continue to make pace on our goal of making this a better world for everyone. What's more rewarding than that, right? Thanks for watching this episode of Superhuman. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel for more Superhuman episodes. And don't forget to visit freethink.com for more stories of people moving the world.